keep these dogs nice and naive. Morning YouTubers, Facebookers and Instagrammers. It's Sunday morning and I'm gonna do a little vlog before my lessons start turning up for the day. So I thought I'd talk about my top five things that I wanna try and make sure that I get right when I first get my puppy. So we're gonna start right at number one, which is something I probably talk about more than anything else, and that's retrieve. I think people think, oh, you know, what's he banging about? Retrieve, 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 retrieve. I feel like I've repeated myself all the time. I get questions on this every day on my social media across YouTube, Facebook, Instagram. But the retrieve really is the best way, long-term, of trying to manipulate, control, and train your dog. If you've got something that your dog wants to bring to you and interact with you with, then you're in the driving seat. And so really early on, as soon as I get a pup, in fact, when I've bred pups, I've had them, I've had them retrieving as young as six weeks old. So I'm not forcing them to do it, it's just a bit of fun. But if you get that in place early on before you do anything else and corrupt your dog with other smells and the interesting things going on, then that really can be something that you can enjoy together. I also find it's the best way, thank you, Mr. Cockrell, best way of learning to interact with your pup. So you really need to make that a priority from right from the very start. Obviously, I'm, I'm not gonna start talking about every, all the ins and outs with it because every part is a huge section of training, but the retrieve is my number one part anyway, guys. Right, number two is attention span. In the early weeks and days when you first get your pup, your attention span of your pup is very, very short. So don't be having it out all the time. You need to have a nice crate tucked in the room out of the way with a radio on in the background. Have the dog out for short periods. I tend to take them out on the garden, pick them up, carry them outside, plonk them down, let them go to the toilet, praise them. Um, then bring them back inside, interact with them for a bit. If they get a little bit bitey and you see they're starting to get had enough, put them away and repeat that. So keep your interaction to short amounts where that you can focus, give your time to the dog, and it isn't starting to pick up lots of bad habits. So that's number two, guys. Right, number three is don't treat your puppy like a human, guys. Remember, it's a dog. It doesn't, it doesn't figure things out in the same way as we do as humans. They don't have compromise in the same way. Encouraging them on the bed, getting them up on the sofa, all these things where we, we put our human brain into a dog and you have to remember it's a four-legged mammal and it does operate in another way. So be really, really careful about treating your dog like a human, guys. That's number three. Right, number four is, remember how old your pup is? I think most of the time people expect way too much from their pups uh, before they're really ready to cope with the pressures that they do. Often I get messages every day, oh, my dog can't sit still for long enough. I'm out in public, blah, blah, blah. You know, if you had a six month old puppy, it might be like having a, a year old toddler. You don't expect much from a year old toddler. Literally, you cannot expect too much from them. Okay, so do the same with your dog. You know, don't put them in situations yet that they can't cope with. It takes quite some time. On average, I say a good novice handler, if they have some help and they do a good job and they restrict in their training, uh, sorry, they keep restrictions in their training, i.e. they're not uh, uh, giving the dog access to lots of things that will corrupt their dog long term. Three years old is a good standard to get a dog to a really good train level. Three years, you're gonna take quite a long time to get that point, uh, to that point, sorry, and it's gonna take a lot of time and patience and restrictions. So just remember that. Make sure that you don't expect too much from your dog too early on. So that's number four. So number five is freedom, okay? Most of the issues that people end up having are where the dog has been given too much freedom. Whether it's freedom in the garden too much, whether it's out putting a lead on, the, on your dog too uh, early because you're in a hurry to get out on those nice, lovely walks that you've created in your mind. You have to be so patient on those things. That's sort of linking in with the things before. Again, linking in with the first thing, the retrieve. You want everything to be happening in and around you and the interaction and you and your dog having a great time together rather than your dog finding interesting things up the hedgerows and in the bushes. By five, six months, you might have already had your first chase. There is, sorry, these are all things that are not gonna be good for you long term. So keep freedom to an absolute limit. Keep everything in and around you. Keep your dog interacting with you and let's keep these dogs nice and naive. Anyway, guys, that's my five top tips. 
Um, and don't forget, if you want any help, drop me a message and uh, I'll do my best to help you out. Don't forget, I do get an awful lot of messages every single day. I do struggle to keep up with everything sometimes, so be persistent if you need. And don't forget, I do online coaching for the people that are not within range of physical help. Um, it's great for people that are starting out with eight-week-old puppies. Sometimes it can get, in, get you through the first four to eight weeks where really you don't need to be going doing anything outside of your house. So that can work really, really well. So if you want some help with that, just get in contact. Also, don't forget to follow me on Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram. I would really appreciate that, guys. Enjoy your Sunday. Catch you later.